Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. What you see here today is a procedural tree generator that I wrote in the Bevy game engine. It was a lot of fun to code up this one. As you can see, it generates random procedural trees. Some of them don't look uh, very much like a tree. Others do look quite, quite realistic. So I'm going to explain what these parameters mean and how they influence the structure of the tree. And later we shall see a little bit of the code and the most important bits and how this entire project is put together. Right, so uh, what do these parameters do? Let's tone them down. Yeah, let's look at level one. All right, so the tree always starts with a primary branch, which we call the root. And this is nothing but a simple cylinder. And then we have child branches that branch out from the root. So you can see two children mean there are two child branches. And the child translation factor is something that positions the child branch along the root branch. So as you can see, translation factor of zero puts the first child at the bottom and the last child is always at the top. So it's zero and one. And if we increase the number of children, you see they are distributed at uniform intervals from the bottom. If you set it to one, then everything just ends up the top. All right, that's the child translation factor. Deviation angle from parent branch. So this value goes from zero to pi by two. That's, as you can already see, how much the child branch deviates from the parent branch. So when it's at zero, there's zero deviation, uh, essentially. The child is just translated from the center of the parent cylinder by parent's radius. And yeah, if it's set to 90, then basically they're at right angles to the parent. Right, what's the child scale? This is an easy one. It's basically how large the child is uh, relative to the parent. So 0.4 means it's 40% of the parent, 0.8 is 80%. I just chose these values randomly. These can obviously be tinkered with. What's the base radius? So the length of the cylinder, the base cylinder is one base radius is 10% to 30% of the length here. Again, can be tweaked. The leaf radius, leaves essentially are rendered as spheres and the leaf radius is nothing but the radius of these spheres. And lastly, let's look at levels. So what are levels? As you can see, the child branches now recursively give rise to child branches of their own and so on. And levels is essentially that. It's the recursive depth to which we generate more branches. So level two, you can see there are two levels of recursion and so on. Obviously the higher number, you get a lot more branches and this results in a more realistic looking tree. Of course, the whole idea comes from the fact that a lot of natural structures are often encoded as fractals and trees are, I would say, the best example of fractal self-similarity in nature. And yeah, just these very simple rules or simple, let's say, parameters can generate quite diverse structures. You might notice that the colors of the leaves are changing. So I coded this up to be a function of the deviation angle. So zero is red, 
45 degrees, which is pi by 4, is green, and pi by 2 is blue, and there is this blue transition between red, green, and blue. Yeah, so that's all the parameters. And now let's take a look at the code. Right, so here's the code for the project. The entire project is essentially two files. The main file I required for a Rust binary is this basic Bevy setup. Bevy is a pure ECS engine. If you're unfamiliar with ECS, ECS is Entity Component Systems, please feel free to look it up. So in this main function, we define the default plugins and uh, the EGUI plugin for the user interactions and the procedural tree plugin, which is our procedural tree generator. The setup function is just a basic setup function where I set up a plane, a light source, and a camera. And that's essentially it. Procedural tree plugin is where the meat of the logic lies. So this is defined as a plugin and the plugin trait is implemented for it. And here we initialize a resource, which is our parameters struct. Resources in Bevy are global objects, which can be accessed by all systems. Components are essentially data which are specific to a particular entity whereas resources are global level data. For example, time is a resource. In this case, we have single instance of the parameter struct. So this is defined as a resource. Again, the default trait should be implemented for any resource type in Bevy. And this is done here. Yeah, and then we define this branch struct. This is essentially a tuple of three elements. The first element is the transformation, the transform. The second is an optional parent index. We shall see how this is constructed later. And the third is a Boolean, which indicates whether the branch is a terminal branch. In case it's a terminal branch, it's a leaf. Yeah, that's what we encode in the branch. And then there are two functions to generate branches, which is called recursively, and a generate leaves function. So the generate branch function is essentially called for each child, so as many children as are defined. And then, yeah, so the angle from the root branch is the deviation angle of the child from its parent. Uh, the translation along the root is calculated using the first child translation factor, as, as I've shown earlier. And then there are these bunch of transformations. We first rotate along the local y-axis. This angle is essentially placing all the children around the surface of the parent, also again uniformly. So a 2 pi is the total angle and that's divided by the child gap that's essentially coming from the number of children. And then we do a couple of translations sideways by a distance of radius and upwards given by the translation along root and the orientation of the child as well. And then we scale the child according to the scale value. And then finally we rotate it along its local x by the angle of deviation from the parent. And that's it. We push the branch to the list of all branches and then call the same function recursively if the current level is less than the total number of levels. So more branches need to be created. Otherwise, if we have reached the total number of levels, then we generate a terminal branch, which is a leaf. Yeah, this is the logic of the branch and leaf generation. And these are called from the main generate function here. The generate function essentially initializes the root branch and then calls generate on it. Right, so now let's come to the rendering components. The tree root is a singular component which is used on the root branch. 
This is used in a couple of contexts when we query for transforms. So in the rotator system, we query for transforms with this component, so it returns only the root. And later, I will show you how all the child branches are linked to the parent branch. So essentially, we only need to rotate the root of the tree. And yeah, the child entities are all you know associated with the root. And then this render tree function is the main function which does the rendering. Here again, we query for entities with the tree root, so only the only the root branch, and also reads in a new parameters change event. So every time parameters change, the render tree system is called. So yeah, we go through all the parameters, and then in the query for all entities, this should also be again one because it's just the root. And then we call despawn recursive. So basically, this clears away all of the entities belonging to the previous tree. And then we generate a new tree. And we have this vector, which stores tuples of child and parent entity relationships. And here we define some colors interpolated using the angle of deviation. And for every branch in the tree, we render either terminal nodes, which are leaves, if uh, the third component is true. We draw leaves using icospheres, so they are spheres, and the color as we computed here. Otherwise, we render them as cylinders, so these are branches. And in the end, we add the entity ID to its parent in this uh, entity parent in this vector. And once everything is rendered, we set for every child and parent tuple in the entity parent indices vector, we assign the child to its respective parent entity. Finally, we add the tree root component to the root of the tree, which is given by this index here, the first index in the entity parent indices vector. Right, and lastly, there is the UI system. So this is used for user interaction. Here we mention all the ranges for every parameter. And uh, whenever the, the value of any parameter changes, we write a parameters change event. And this is for all the parameters. And lastly, we have the generate button, which calls this function where every parameter is assigned a random value in its range and then triggers a parameters changed event. So that was it. If you're interested in more of such content, please comment below on what sort of stuff you'd like to see next. Your likes and comments always help out the channel a lot and further motivates me uh, to keep exploring new ideas. You will find links to the GitHub repo in the description below. Uh, feel free to check it out if you're interested. And now I'll let you enjoy a few more random trees. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.